بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أي الأحباب there should be no mystery for anyone who practices Islam the importance of tahara and purification and as the ulama fiqh usually put the book of Tahara or always put the book of Tahara is always the first chapter and this is due to the fact that Tahara is a shart min shurut salat so Tahara or purification it is a condition from amongst the conditions to pray and whenever you have a condition for something, that means it is something that must exist before that action or that ibadah. As we say often in English, preconditions. You know, a precondition or a condition for doing something, you must do this, you must do this, you must do this, meaning those things have to precede the action that you want to do. So, knowing this, purification is a condition for prayer and prayer is your wasila or your your means and your uh, establishing your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal la yaqbal allahu salata ahadukum the Prophet والسلام, said, Allah does not accept the prayer of any one of you that has hadith until he makes wudu. In this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, in hadith ayyul ahbab, this is in reference to impurities or those things which break your purification so for example some of the types of hadith hadith is, is divided into two types hadith, hadith al-akbar uh, hadith al askar hadith al-akbar meaning the, the big one the major hadith is things like uh, a woman's menstruation or that Uh, having sexual impurities, for example, uh, from, e from ejaculating or from having sexual intercourse. Those are some of the major hadith. From the minor hadith or the minor types, uh, the minor things of, of breaking one's wudu are things like passing gas, urinating, urinating. Uh, having uh, defecation, akramakum Allah, all of those things, those are from the minor types of hadith that break your wudu. So in this hadith, the Prophet والسلام, said, لا يقبل الله صلاة أحدكم إذا أحدث حتى يتوضو. So that Allah doesn't accept the prayer of the one who has this hadith. And that that is uh, yashmal, it includes the major and the minor Hadith. Allah doesn't accept the salat without that. You can make dua, yes. You can do other some other, other acts of ibadah, making dhikr and things like this, but you cannot pray. You cannot make the salat. The salat which is well known as the prayer of the Muslims that we pray five times a day. And along with this, in this hadith, it shows us that in this hadith specifically, that we see the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned wudu. So in the uh, by mentioning wudu, this indicates for us that this is, the Prophet ﷺ is talking about the minor hadith, because the minor hadith, although Allah doesn't accept the salat of, of both, but the minor hadith, the reason this hadith indicates for us that it's minor hadith, because the Prophet ﷺ said the, the way we deal with that is by making wudu. 
and wudu is not sufficient for the major hadith. So, for example, if someone uh, has sexual impurities, uh, you know, they, they ejaculated or uh, had sexual intercourse or uh, a woman had her menstrual bleeding and she finished her cycle and so forth, in order for them to prepare themselves for prayer at that point, they must make ghusl. They must make the full bath. And so that's what indicates for us that the Prophet ﷺ was, uh, in this hadith, it was in reference to uh, the minor hadith. But it includes both hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept. And this non-acceptance, one of the things the ulama point to is that this means siha uh, salat This refers to the soundness of one's prayer, meaning that a, one's prayer is totally not, it doesn't mean that you'll have less ajr. Sometimes those when the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, if there's a command or there's a, uh, or, um, a, a negation, so here it's not a nahi, it's not a prohibition, but instead it's a negation. And, because, and sometimes a negation, when it's mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, then that can mean it, it, it sometimes can mean that that action is uh, not sound, the form of ibadah is not sound, or that that ibadah is naqs, that it, it has less weight. And in this hadith, it lets us know it, it means totally the acceptance of salat. So, la yaqbal Allahu salata ahadukum. Allah will not accept the salat of any one of you until he, you know, he is on tahara. So that negates your prayer in totality, not in partial. It doesn't mean that you can pray with no wudu and then you just have less reward. No. So that's very important for us to understand and to articulate to our brothers and sisters because you would be surprised how many people were even born Muslim who do not even have basic knowledge of uh, these issues. And I'll tell you a real story. I was just sitting in a, a, a dars a couple of nights ago in one of our local masajid and the uh, sheikh was saying uh, he he, he t talked about his country. He's from one of the Muslim countries, an, an Arab country, which the knowledge is very widespread there, but there's many ulama, there's the history of Islam there. And he was telling me about a female relative. He was relating that she does not pray, or she prays, she never misses. She said she never misses in her life. She would feel destroyed. She never misses two raka units of prayer in the in the morning and then two when she comes home from work she doesn't miss that that's what she feels comfortable and that's in her life okay she's established that but that's not ibadah why is that not accepted because it's not in accordance with the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu no matter how good her intention is you cannot she doesn't even have the niyyah that that is considered fajr she just prays when she wants to when she gets up and she prays two rakah units at night when she wants to. That's not accepted by Allah. And Allah knows best if, you know, her hukum, if she a Muslim or not. Allah knows best. You know, that would be something to ask the, the scholars. The point I want to bring up, Ayyul Ahbab, is that the way of Islam and the way of our ibadah has two conditions. That you have sincerity to Allah in doing it, you worship only Allah, and that it's in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So your tahara, your salat, all your things must be how the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam did it. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.